Yeah. And it's every team is different. Every scenario is different. Every coach is different. Every system that you're in is different. Like, you know, the one thing that I, I reflect on a bunch now when I watch, it took me a couple of years to like really dive back in. But now that I'm diving back in a little bit. is Really, the, the nuances of quarterback play within offensive systems where, you know, the beauty, and there's no knock at all to anyone in this tree. There's some great quarterbacks who are playing in this tree, but the Shanahan tree that came out of, you know, Washington and now has spread like wildfire all over the NFL with, you know, McVay and uh, uh, Callahan. And, you know, there's a lot of people who are running this offense now is one in which the quarterback uh, doesn't have to go out there and point out a mic and sit under center and see where rotation's going and audible to one of 12 plays that, that are sitting there available for the specific play. Um, that was what the West Coast offense used to be, uh, where, you know, I got, a, I got a lot of a glimpse of that. I got to do that with Hugh Jackson. I got to do that with you know, John Gruden. I got to do that with Mike McCarthy, where, you know, there was plenty of times in all three of those teams. Well, I guess with me as a rookie, not as much with the Browns, but more with Green Bay and with, you know, watching uh, Derek Carr in Oakland, where we would literally just say, hey, we're in trips, right, go. And we knew that, you know, if we're in trips right and they're in single high, it's this play audible to this play. If they're in too high audible to that play, if there's, you know, an uneven box, get to a run. You know, those are all the things that you're thinking about as a quarterback to go out there and play. The Shanahan tree is one that requires you to play fast. It's more about misdirection. It's more about building on top of the last series that you had or on top of the last quarter. So from a quarterback perspective, you have much more of an opportunity to play free. So in that scenario, you know, from a guy who, who I like, as you could probably tell, I like the intellectual challenge of like trying to get my mind on things that aren't on ball. Now, you know, I get into the Shanahan tree and start playing with Matt LaFleur or going and playing with Arch Smith in, in Tennessee. And now I'm looking for the challenge. Where's the middle challenge? Where's the audible? You know, where, where, where can I go out there and show that like, you know, I know more than just whether or not the safety on the right's coming down or not. And what you see with someone like Purdy and, and guys like, uh, you know, Kurt, is that, in my opinion, where where what I lacked then is when you have that little extra you know uh, mental capacity when you play in a system that's a little more you know narrow, where you where you see greatness is the things that they do out, out, out off the field within the huddle with on the sideline within the media they just become great leaders and that's one thing that I that I I didn't have the confidence to to go out and do I was so focused on saving my career when I was playing in those in those you know, environments that I, I, I wasn't, you know, hitting flow state the right way because I was thinking about everything, you know, that I needed to do from my footwork to be able to get this ball, you know, off of a play action and on a, on a strike route. Those guys, they, what they got to do with their little extra mental capacity was, you know, become great leaders, be the glue to some unbelievable talent in the systems that they're in. I think Jordan Love has, you know, a lot of upside um, you know, with with Coach LaFleur, you know, leading the way, Coach LaFleur is going to continue to to put him in great positions to grow grow great balls. But what I'm most excited about is because he has, you know, an offensive coordinator who who has had so much success like LaFleur has had in his, in his uh, you know, early careers as his head coach. You know, Jordan gets to go out there and now be, you know, a guy who has no worry in the world uh, when it comes to whether or not he's going to keep his job. And he gets to focus on building relationships with every guy who's around him and hopefully you know, uh, you know, just continue to be a great teammate. And that's where he gets to, you know, that's where he gets to spend his time now. That's where he gets to spend that extra mental capacity. So that flow state continues to come back to. How, how important is that first team that you get drafted to and that first experience? Because I would argue if Deshaun Kaiser had gotten drafted to the Niners with Shanahan or the Packers with LaFleur, or name a team in a, you know, in a good spot with a good coach with, with some weapons, you know, I think your career could have gone a little bit differently. What, what's your opinion on that? Absolutely. I mean, it's it's easy to say what it could have, should have. You know, everyone has their story. Um, you know, I, I I know there was three or four quarterbacks that were drafted after me that ended up in situations that have them still playing today. You know, they they ended up as a third string guy who got paid a little bit of money to you know uh, to to not make a ruckus on the team and be a good teammate. And then over time, they got their opportunities and they're still playing right now. Um, so yeah, that, that would have been great, uh, uh, you know, to, to have an opportunity to learn from the right people and to, to, you know, maybe identify yourself as a long-term guy, a guy who can be a, maybe a good backup and maybe start four or five years from now. But, you know, I dug myself into a hole and it was my own hole that I dug myself into. You mentioned the, you know, the comments that I made in pre-draft about, you know, all the experiences that I had that I can go out and win today. 
and that, you know, I could, you know, be the body of, of Cam Newton with the brains of Tom Brady. Like I, I wanted to go win right now. And I got that opportunity with the Browns. I got, I got the, the chance to go win right now. And what I realized very quickly is that there's a lot of moving parts to, to being great. There's, you know, there's timing within, you know, you know, how your team is spending money with talent around you. There's, there's, you know, your, your, you know, relationship with your offensive coordinator and the trust that you might have to be able to go out there and play free. There's, you know, uh, injuries that happen. There's, you know, ownership and management that gets involved, you know, with, with teams, especially rebuilding teams where they want to have their hands in on things. And those all become, you know, uh, typically things that pull, you know, young guys away from, from what really matters. And that's just going out there and, and trying to win ball games. You know, there was probably way too many conversations that I had my rookie year with, you know, ownership and management and player personnel guys that I should have just been out there focusing on, you know, playing ball. And once again, if I was drafted, maybe a pick higher or a pick later, I might have been in the position that would allow me to, to learn about what being a pro was versus, you know, within, you know, the first couple of se- or first couple of games of the season, there was nothing you can tell me in the quarterback room from any guy. Like I got a lot of respect from Cody Kessler and, I think I, we had Kevin Hogan at the time. I got a lot, a lot of respect, a lot of love for those guys. Those are still great friends of mine now. But quite frankly, by week two or three, why was I going to listen to them? You haven't had success. You know, like I, I feel like I know more than you. I'm the one who beat you out to be the starting quarterback. You know, that's how naive I was as a you know 21 year old guy who just got handed a couple million bucks and you know was walking around his home state as a hometown hero. But you know, I, yeah, I, if, looking back on it, if if you could tell me I could choose which team I would have ended up on. Yeah, I would have loved to have gone to, you know, the Giants in the third round and sat behind, you know, a couple quarterbacks and then got my shot two years later once I knew what being a pro was or, you know, going to another team. But, you know, every situation is different. You know, I had plenty of opportunity to go and, and you know, be the hometown hero. And, and you know, I dropped the ball and, and didn't really, you know, have the season, the, the season I wanted. Hell, I didn't have one one win to, to at least hang my hat on something there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to bring up the stat, but <laughs> you brought it it's up. Like I, and I love it. Like it's, 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 it's a part of me. It's, it's, it's my brand now. You know, I, I was only 16. There's only two of us, me and Dan. And I like to think that, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to fail forward. I'm going to take every lesson that I, I learned in that, in that building and apply it to uh, really business. You know, uh, now that I'm, now that I can you know speak freely and be who I actually am fully all the time now, you know, a couple years out of the league. You know, the best thing that the Browns offered to me was uh, an opportunity to to see the ins and outs of of a of an organization of a of a multi billion dollar organization, and how communication happened throughout that year, how uh, you know media was handled throughout that year, how uh, you know hierarchies of management was was handled throughout that year. You know, I was a 21 year old starting quarterback who got to sit in on on senior council meetings. Who got to, you know, uh, get dinners with GMs and, and, you know, have private meetings with head coaches and owners. And ultimately, you know, I, what I got a glimpse into, at least at that time of the Browns was, you know, the dysfunction that ended up in 0 16 with, with, you know, two guys who are no longer, you know, with the organization. We had Sashi Brown who was going down one path and had one mindset. We had Hugh Jackson going down another path. And we had, you know, an ownership group who's looking to freaking win. I didn't care what path to go down, but just give me a path that won games. So all of that pressure ended up on me as a starting quarterback. And, you know, I was the only one who was required every Wednesday to come back in the media and deal with the questions about all that other stuff that was on top of me. So as I reflect on that, I just know, you know, what worked and more importantly in that season, what didn't work that I want to try to apply to my business now.